of me. Yes, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Praise God for saving me. Let's give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to read a passage of scripture. We only have a few minutes, but you know, we worship the Lord. And there's something about worship and giving thanks unto the Lord that does more than give us something to dance and shout about. But it's good to dance and shout before the Lord. But worship and praise and thanksgiving does so much more. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. Shout for joy to the Lord. Psalm 100, I'm sorry. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with Thanksgiving. Everybody say that with me. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Somebody shout, give thanks. And praise his name. For the Lord is good. Somebody shout, the Lord is good. I don't I know I know you got on your mask keep your mask on but I just want you to shout one more time the Lord is good and his love endures forever for his faithfulness yes for his faithfulness continues through all generations so far the scripture father bless this word charge it with your power to the end oh God that your name is glorified your people edified and built up and an alarm sounded for sinners in Jesus name we pray amen so I'm just going to be before you for a few minutes. I love that we worship. That's what I wanted us to do this morning. And that is uh, from the topic, giving thanks in 2020. Giving thanks in 2020. You know, as we embark up upon this Thanksgiving in just a few days, needless to say, this Thanksgiving is going to be different from those in the past. Many of us have canceled our Thanksgiving and uh, we, it'll just be those that are in the house uh, so that those that are traveling aren't exposed and, and so forth. And so this is going to be a different Thanksgiving for many. Uh, it's going to be a different Thanksgiving for many also because there will be over 250,000 people in America, in America who will not be at the Thanksgiving table this year. We've had over 250,000 people that have died to this virus so far this year. And I believe that number is so much higher uh, than, uh, than what's reported. Uh, I just know of one story where a woman had a problem and she kept going and they kept sending her back home. And the next thing you know, she died. And of course, those deaths, they don't count. Uh, but uh, we thank God that, um, that even through all of the sorrow, of 2020, even through all of the setbacks of 2020, we still have a praise in our mouth. Oh yeah. Regardless of what we had to face this year, we still have a thank you, Jesus. And this year has brought us so much, and just to name a few, that a few there's been a brutal uh, presidential election cycle, and of course all of those things that came with it made us realize, wonder if we were in the twilight zone, because there were so many things that were outside of the norm, so many things that we didn't uh, haven't seen before. You kept hearing the term unprecedented. Uh, because it was something that we had never seen before. And uh, it was a wild ride of an election. And uh, how many of you know that we, it's not over quite yet? How many of you know that we, the people of God, must continue to pray? You know, yes, that's right. 
You know, we danced in the street on the Saturday that it was announced that we had a new president that was elected, a new president elected. And of course, we da danced in the churches on that Sunday, about two weeks ago. Uh, but during that time, there's been efforts that have been taken to undermine the transition. Well, the undermining of the transition is something that affects each of us because it affects our national security. It affects the ability of the incoming administration to, to get on top of this COVID pandemic and turn the, the corner. And so it affects us in ways that we uh, probably don't realize yet. So even though we rejoice because we prayed the will of the Lord be done, and even though we rejoice because we believe that there's going to be some civility brought back to the highest office in the land, we cannot stop praying. We cannot stop praying. We cannot stop praying. We cannot. I believe that one of the reasons that God intervened is because we were praying. You heard me mention it. I believe uh, what my sister-in-law was telling me that Floyd Bishop Flake's church had 1,600 people on the prayer line praying for the election. Oprah had a prayer. She had uh, Jews, uh, she had uh, 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 imam, she had a rabbi, she had a, a pastor, and people were praying. Uh, there were other people, uh, my brother-in-law's church in Savannah, they were fasting and praying for the election. Morning Star Church, in our midnight cry, and in the mornings, we were praying. And I believe, and I believe, and I'm, I'm not sure, but there was one church, I believe, that did a 21-day fast for the election. So America was crying out to the Lord. But we cannot stop crying out to the Lord. The way prayer works is the Bible says that he knows what you need before you ask him. That's what the Bible says. So you're not praying to inform God of what you need. That's not the purpose of prayer. The purpose of prayer is to acknowledge that without him, you can't make it. The purpose of prayer is to acknowledge to everything around you that no matter what's against you, that if God is for you, you're going to be all right. The purpose of prayer is to humble yourself before God, the God that loves you and takes care of you, and say, Lord, I need you in my life. I need you in my marriage. I need you to help me be a good parent. I need you to help me in my financial situation. I need you to help me with the things that you've put in my life to do. Lord, I need you. And when America prays, America says, Lord, we need you in the White House. God, we need you in the Congress, the House and the Senate. Lord, we need you in every state capital. God, we need you in the mayoral office. Lord, every alderman, every Congress, every state. Lord, we need you in our government. And the Bible tells us when the righteous pray, God hears. Oh, somebody ought to praise him. Yeah, somebody ought to praise him. When the righteous pray, God hears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the Amex old, has a, a slogan, uh, membership has its privileges. There's something about knowing God that makes a difference. God will answer you when you pray. I don't care who you are. But there's something about having a relationship with him. Lord, I only have a few minutes. But I'm reminded of Lazarus. The Bible tells us that Jesus would hang out at the house of Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. And when Lazarus got sick, the sister sent word, the one you love is sick. Why? Because they had a, a, a relationship with him. They didn't even have to send a name. They had a relationship with him. And sometimes we're in trouble. We don't have time to go through all the formality. All we have time to do is say, Lord, I need your help. God, I'm crying out to you. Why? Because he already knows who you are. You don't have to say, this is me, Lord. The Lord knows who you are. Because you hang out with him. He knows your voice. And so the, when the righteous cry, God hears. 
And of course, we have a lot of social unrest in 2020 with the death of George Floyd, and it kind of triggered something that was going on in this country. And of course, we know the aftermath in the streets and the pain in which we experienced as a nation watching this man die. And of course, there's been weather cataclysmic events all over with floods and fires and, and hurricanes this year. And of course, they're getting worse and they're intensifying. And then of course, this pandemic, this affected us in so many ways, loss of life, but also loss of economy. If they don't approve another bill and do it very soon, there will be people who are evicted from their homes. They don't approve a bill and do it very, very soon. There will be people who will not be able to put food on the table. Some of you might have seen uh, miles and miles of cars lined up across the country to get food. And some people said, I've never done this before. But all of this is an impact uh, of, of the coronavirus, the education system. Children who will now be at home and lack ex access to education in the ways they would have had they been in school. For children who are well off, uh, their parents are well off, they'll probably be a little better off because they'll be able to get resources that children that don't have that, comes from families that have that uh, income, won't have access to. Same thing with mental illness, people with suffering from anxiety and depression because of the virus. So there have been a lot of things that have been happening in our society in this year, much of which we have never seen before. Some people are looking for the next few weeks to come and go so that they can say bye-bye to 2020. We don't want to see you again. But how many of you know that even though there's a date on the calendar, that God does not move by dates on the calendar. But how many of you know God moves in times and seasons? Oh, I don't know if y'all hear me this morning. I'm reminded of the scripture that talks about the sons of Issachar, how it was, they were charged with understanding their times. That's why you often hear me say that we have to watch and pray. All this week, there's been a song in my heart uh, hold on, be very sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Uh, oh, we're in a time in which we have to both watch and pray. We're in a time where we have to be sure that our anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Uh, I can't tell you what every day is going to be like coming forward, but I can tell you that every day won't be an easy day. But I can tell you that if you hold on to the rock, uh, and then the song goes on to say that rock is Jesus. Uh, oh, I don't know if y'all hear me in this place this morning, uh, but it says to be sure, be very sure that your ankle holds and grips the solid rock. We've had some bad days in 2020, but as long as we held on and anchored our faith to the rock, God has brought us through. As long as we continue to secure our anchor on the rock, God's going to bring us through the rest of 2020. As long as we are sure and very sure that our anchor holds and grips the solid rock. He's going to take us through 2021. I don't care what come, comes what may. As long as we are steadfast on the Lord Jesus Christ, he's going to bring us through with victory on the other side. Oh, somebody ought to bless you. One of the things that we have to remember is he doesn't just bring us through, but he brings us through with victory. He's not the kind of God that just brings you through, give you a couple of cents and pat you on the back and send you on your way. He's the kind of God, yeah, I'm going to take you through some things. Yeah, it might be a little hard, uh, but honey, when you come out of this, uh, that's why he tell you if you suffer a little while, I'm going to establish you. You might have to suffer. That's the part we don't like. Uh, but if you suffer for a little while, uh, he said, I'm going to establish you. Uh, why? Because he has a covenant with you. Uh, Oh, if your anchor holds and grips the solid rock, uh, you don't have to worry about the dark winter. Uh, if your anchor holds and grips the solid rock, uh, you don't have to worry about how bad it gets ec economically. Uh, oh, 
if your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. You don't have to worry about your children during the pandemic. Oh, somebody ought to bless his name. Because whatever he does, he does to show himself strong. And I believe for every person under the sound of my voice, uh, God wants me to remind you this morning uh, that he's coming through for you. God wants me to remind you that he has not forgotten you. God wants me to remind you that as long as you hold on to him, I know it might be uh, 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 tempting to look the other way. I know it might be tempting to lose your foundation, but whatever you do, don't lose your faith in God. Whatever you do, don't let loose of the rock which is Christ Jesus. Oh, I need somebody to give the Lord praise in this place. And I'm going to take just a few more minutes. Pastor Neil stole my testimony this morning, but I was going to talk about, Pastor Neil, how God blessed this church. One of the things that we learn about Thanksgiving is Thanksgiving is about gratitude. And what we see in scripture, and we see that it's just a natural expression of uh, or response to God's goodness. But one of the things that we have to be reminded of every now and then is that whatever God does, he does out of his graciousness. He does out of his goodness. We don't earn it and we don't deserve it. It is but the goodness of the Lord. And I think in America, we're so entitled. You know, we, we, most of us, we know what poverty is, but we really, 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 really don't know what poverty is. I mean, there are parts of the country that would blow our mind what people experience. But in this country, in the richest country in the world, even in poverty, we're blessed. And I'm not saying that God has given us poverty because I believe that it is the will of God for us to have life and more abundantly. But it's something about this entitled spirit that make us come and, 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 and set up in the house of the Lord and not lift our hands in worship. There's something about this entitled spirit that would let us go day in and day out without giving thanks to the Lord. There's something about this entitled spirit that allows us to forget what the Lord has done for us and what the Lord has brought us through. That's why I love what the Jews do. They repeat and rehearse and recite what God has done. Lest I forget over and over they're rehearsing. And Pastor Neil, I was thinking about that and I was thinking about how how God bless us when we didn't have a building. How God bless us when we were always borrowing somebody else's church. God bless us when we had to ask permission to do this and permission to do that. God blessed us when we weren't the owners, but we were the borrowers. And we stayed faithful in prayer and in service. And God said, because you stayed faithful, I'm going to bless you. And not only did God bless us, Pastor Neil, but he gave it to us without debt. Not only did he give us without debt, but he put us in a position where we could now be a blessing to somebody else. So, and for those who are worshiping with us in this, in this, on this building and on this campus, we thank God because the Lord let us know what it's like to be on the other end. So now God has blessed us that it, we're in the exact opposite position that we in before. Or oh, somebody ought to give God praise. We say thank you. We say thank you, Lord. Pastor Neil talked about my emergency surgery, and I was just thinking about it. After they finished, they said, You'll, be, uh, you'll have 100% recovery. And they said, um, in other words, you won't even know in a, in a while that this even ever happened. You'll see the scars, because they cut me open, right? It was a major surgery, but you won't even know this happened. And as I started thinking about it, I remembered how the year before, uh, they saw, uh, after doing a, a procedure, they saw uh, a spot on my kidney. And they said, we want to look at it later. And I let it go in my mind and out of my mind. But a year later, the doctor said, I want to look at it. He went to look for a spot on my kidney. And he said, I guess we made a mistake a year ago. Y'all 
don't hear me. He said, I guess we made a mistake because you must have moved during the MRI last year because we don't see anything on your liver. There's nothing on your kidney. There's nothing on your spleen. There's nothing on your pancreas. There's nothing on your lungs. There's nothing on... Oh, y'all don't hear me in this place! And we set up in the house of the Lord, not because God didn't do something for us, and we didn't get a cancer diagnosis this year. You ought to be screaming. <laughs> I, I don't have any children but I have 15 nieces and nephews and I pray for them all the time and I didn't get a call in the middle of the night saying something happened to one of them y'all don't hear me in this place so every time I come to the Lord and you see me throw up my hand I'm like thank you God you kept them thank you God for your protection thank you God your hand was over their lives thank you God I'm grateful I think about I think about all of those unspoken requests you know how you say I have unspoken requests that means you can't open your mouth to get it out you can't hear it and you don't want nobody else to hear it. Do I have anybody who have any unspoken requests? But honey, what about when God moves on those unspoken requests? You can't even tell nobody because you're too embarrassed or it's too painful. Thank you, God. Oh, I need some grateful people in the house. Oh, I need some worshipers that are blessing for unspoken requests. Get up, oh, child. Yeah, somebody who know that God will move. Even in those things you too embarrassed to talk about. God will move, God will move, God will move. So when I tell you that I have something to be grateful for, and to yet I'm trying to, trying to go on. We got five minutes, but when I tell you that I'm grateful, I'm grateful. When I tell you that I have a heart of thanksgiving, my heart is full of thanksgiving. When I tell you, it doesn't matter who's singing or who's preaching, i got to praise in my mouth. Oh, somebody ought to bless them. Somebody ought to bless them. Come on, stand to you. Stand to your feet, stand to your feet, stand to your feet. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on, come on. We just want to take a few minutes and just thank the Lord. I, 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 I didn't even get a yeah. Son of God, Jesus Christ the righteous. And if anything, he gave us an opportunity to receive a gift, the gift of gifts, which
which is salvation. You're here. You need this gift. You want this gift of gifts. It's found in the only begotten Son of God, Jesus Christ. You're here, and you need this Jesus. Would you repeat this prayer after me? Dear Lord Jesus, I declare that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. I confess you as my Lord, and I believe in my heart that you died on the cross for me and my sins, but arose again from among the dead. I now repent of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. I ask that you be my Lord and Savior from this day forth. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, in Jesus' name, amen. We want to congratulate you. For those who have prayed this prayer for the first time and meant it, we want to welcome you into the family of God, the kingdom of God. And we briefly here at the Morning Star Church want to pray for you even right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for the souls that have been won into the kingdom, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for opening up the doors of their hearts to receive you in as Lord and Savior. And Father, even right now, we rebuke the sense of depression and hopelessness in the mighty name of Jesus. And I speak and declare a new heart and a new mind be granted unto them in and through the mighty name of Jesus. We even declare in the name of Jesus that every chain in their life be broken, every fetters of iron shattered, every yoke and every entrapment and every enslavement be destroyed over their hearts and over their minds and spirits and souls in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we ask and pray that the Holy Spirit would come upon them wherever they may be in the mighty name of Jesus. And again, we speak hope to the hopelessness in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak joy of the Lord will be their strength and portion in this day and hour and Thanksgiving season. We rebuke suicide. We rebuke it even right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We rebuke the spirit of destruction and self-destruction even now. We command that it loose their hold over their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. And we declare new beginnings, new horizons in the mighty name of Jesus, new direction. We decree even right now that their desires and their appetites are now submitted to the written word of God and the principles of the kingdom of God. And we even decree when the church doors are open, we even decree opportunities to be baptized in water because of the remission of sins. And we even decree even between now and then, when the church doors are reopened, they shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost and we thank you, Lord, for doing it even right now in Jesus' name. And we thank you for being their shepherd, which they shall not want. In Jesus' name we pray. And we put our hands together and say amen. amen.